Welcome everybody to Chaps Mini Cultures episode 87. And this may be one for the US audience, um, but maybe for the rest of the world as well. Because today can be an important day for some people. I think the more important day will be what happens tomorrow. So we'll have a few suggestions what might be relevant for after the American general election. Stay tuned. Hello, everybody. What day is today, Brett? It's November 3rd, 2020, a Tuesday, as it happens, and um, Election Day. So a couple of different things happening in today. There are probably a bunch of other important things happening too, but today, I guess, we've been leading up to the Election Day. Well, Election Day in the United States, like the rest of the world cares, right? Well... I think they kind of do. Well, the parts of the world do care how this ends. And I'm going to admit, it matters to me too. Mm -hmm. I guess it matters to a lot of people. And as I was contemplating today's day and what it means to the voting public in the United States, I was looking back at all these months, years more than years that led up to this moment. And one thing will not change no matter what the outcome of this election is. We need to talk with each other, whether we like each other or not, whether we agree with each other or not. So this is a suggestion for us, from us to you, to everyone, it doesn't matter who's the tenant in the White House going forward. We put them there. And whether we like it or not, we're going to have to deal with it. How are you going to deal with the outcome, Brett? Well, I, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. And uh, yes, I agree with you. Uh, you know, no matter what happens, this is democracy. And I come from a democracy where, well, I, so I was reminded by someone the other day, it's not a democracy. It was a, a, a republic, a difference. You know, we, we can get over some semantics. but Semantics. At the end of the day, I uh, grew up in a, in a society where it was compulsory to vote. Vote. If you did not vote, if you do not vote as a, uh, and you didn't take your part as an active citizen in the process, uh, you got a fine, which is really kind of strange for a lot of people. In the US, it's optional. And I would say just at the basis, I would hope everybody would vote, has voted. Of course, we've got issues with people, the access to voting and all that kind of stuff. That is always an issue. It always has been in this country. And uh, that's another subject. But yes, at the end of the day, today is going to end up, whether it's today or whether it's, you know, in a, in a few weeks, we're going to have a resolution to this. And right. I heard somebody else say this today. There is going to be a resolution to this. At the end of that resolution, we have to approach it in a way that is, okay, What have, now we deal with what we've got. And just that happens with every election. There's winners and losers. And uh, people, you know, people bow out gracefully if, uh, you know, if that's uh, what their bent is. And that's what's happened usually. So that's what I would hope. And, uh, and then, of course, beyond that, it's important to me because I've got people that uh, I guess I'm, I kind of feel I don't, have much of a right to be that concerned about whether it goes either way, but the effect that it has on the people that we work with and that we interact with. And that's where my concern is. Um, and that's, right. not, that, that's not totally saying I don't care about my own family. I certainly do. You know, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, you know, and I, but with the, there are some ramifications to either way that, that an election goes. Um, with a continuation of certain policies that may that, that, that may cause harm, real harm to people. And I that but on both sides, no matter what happens, I know no matter who wins it, there's gonna be fear 
right? There's fear, which is obviously, you know, in political campaigns, they ramp up fear anyway. But the fear afterwards that I think that is this, we have to kind of open up to each other and say, I understand that what happened to happen and maybe you, uh, the result is not what you wanted and you have some fear around that. So let's talk about that. Let's, right. open, let's talk about it. And that's, that's where I think the, the first conversation of talking has to take place. And I'm, I'm, I always remind myself, what did the elections four years ago change for me, except for how I felt about it? So sure, we have emotions around the outcome. We have probably emotional attachment to the expectations we have uh, in terms of who we want to be our governing um, leaders. Now, if you're going to be really honest, did my life change for the better or the worse, aside from the emotions, did my life change four years ago? Did I love my wife less? Did I spend less time with my kids? Or did I have personal repercussions? I did not. And I acknowledge I, I come with a skin color that is honored with privilege for some reason in this country. But I can say for myself, my life, except for the emotional part of the outcome, did not change. And it did not change eight years ago or 12 years ago or 16 years ago. Because I continue to do my work. I continue to do my business. My purpose, my vision for what I do, the mission that I have in approaching my work is not affected by the outcome of any election. Sure, there are frameworks, legal frameworks, taxations, immigration policies for me as a as a foreign passport holder that do matter and that will affect me to a certain degree however if i'm going to be really honest the impact was fairly minimal compared to the hyperbole that we've experienced in this country for the last four plus years now i'm not going to diminish and negate the negative effect the election could have for certain parts of the population. However, what, what I miss most, and I had this conversation with the neighbor that lives across the street from me today, because I asked her, what do you expect for tonight? And the end of the conversation was that I miss the United States that was able to have a dialogue. So for me, the biggest suggestion, the biggest hope for what happens starting tomorrow is a continuous path back to having a civil discourse. That's something that has suffered tremendously in the last couple of years. And that is why I said, let's suggest the talking because talking happened. It, it happened in in our bubbles, in our echo chambers, we resonated and we heard our own blabber, but talking across the differences, I haven't seen all that much of that in the last couple of years. How do you feel about that? Well, I take a slightly different approach. Four years okay. ago, it did change for me, not, not economically. So it wasn't economically, you know, I did, I've done very well. I did very well in the eight years preceding to that. I did very well in the, in the years preceding, you know, that. And, but it, it changed, I guess, for me fundamentally, where I saw just how much the, a political dialogue and a political approach can have an impact on how people that don't look like us, right, don't have our privilege, um, were very scared. And so as a result, it changed my perception of what I needed to teach myself about, what I needed to teach right. myself okay. about me, yeah. I agree. right, and about how to have those conversations with people like me. And sometimes that works, but the defensiveness, now it's just harder and harder to do. So not that I want to give up the work. I don't want to give up the work. But, mm -hmm. I, it, but I would hope that beyond this, whatever happens, I'm still able to have those conversations with people and maybe people are going to be more open now, you know, um, that, uh, and, I, and I say this again, no matter which way it goes, 
people are going to be more open to say, okay, let's reflect on what happened. Let's reflect on how it affected our neighbors, our friends, our family, our relationships, because it did affect some of my relationships. And that's sad, right? And, um, and you know, some of that's my fault. I completely take that. Maybe I'll just take all the blame for, for it, right? Because I've got, because I've got the information as to a little bit deeper in, in insight or from the work we do as to why people think, act and work like they do, I should have taken more responsibility to make that outreach. But I still do this. Sometimes I just get back in this human sense of I want to be right, like we talked about yesterday. I want to be right. I want to convince you why you're wrong. <laughs> and, that's, and, that, and that's not a good spot. I'm responsible for that, just like anybody else. Yeah? I agree. And that's why I tell myself, right, that this is a, the suggestion that I make, I make to myself as well, is that I want to be open for that dialogue. My invitation is no matter where you stand, no matter how you celebrate, how, how you gloat or grieve the outcome of this election, I do want to talk with you, not at you. I want to talk with you. I want to see, I want to listen, and I want to see and want to feel where you stand. And maybe that is different from where I stand. However, I won't be able to understand unless I listen. And the listening with the aim of relating to others is different than listening to respond with the reason why I think I'm right and you're wrong, right? Yeah. So my suggestion is let's, let's talk with each other. And, well, as I said earlier, go back to the – What's the what's the word to to the promise and the the framework of having a an adult civil discourse with full sentences? <laughs> huh? With what? With full sentences. <laughs> exactly with subject, predicate, object. That would be you throw in a few adjectives maybe to color right. it up a little bit. That's right. I'm all for that. No, I agree with that, and uh, you know it's a. Uh, Life will go on, and you know, but you know, we need to protect those around us that are that are fearful. Um, not that they need protecting from us, but whenever they want it, we're here and we're offering that. And uh, and but only for ourselves. I mean, I'm you know, I'm certainly probably going to be affected in some way, shape, or form. Um, but I want to take a step back and also just understand that the people that are grieving need need someone to listen to someone to talk to someone to uh to process it because it's a pretty you know it's a pretty fraught atmosphere out there at the moment unlike where it's been before i mean i remember going through the gore bush thing right and uh at the end of the day i just watched something last night about gore's acceptance speech and you know at the end of the day he said well i fundamentally disagree with the decision i accept it and as he said i once i suggested to someone before it's now time for me to go i mean uh, those are the days i kind of long for right so that's that's uh that's where i think we we should get back to well and I, I think there is a chance to going back to that if we collectively decide that it is upon us who creates who we are we are in charge of the society that we create as as a group and it's not the the person that lives in the white house or it's not the government um or the the person in the governor's mansion of your state it is us as a group who are in charge and we have the responsibility and the opportunity to shape the culture that we want to have and i think if if there is uh, because you already alluded to what what are some of the positives of the of the political unrest we've seen in this country i think one of the positives is that some of the inequalities and injustices of this country have been brought into the mainstream light into center stage and not to the fringes of the stage now we are talking about social issues in a way that I haven't seen and heard or experienced being discussed in, in, in my adulthood. And I've been, I've been in touch with the United States since my teenage years, and I, I've seen many different iterations of this. So I've, I think that this is one of the, 
one of the positive developments, I would say, and, and which leads essentially, in my opinion, it leads to dialogue because the issues at hand in this society can only be resolved by having a broader consensus, which we can only establish if we talk with each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let us go back, hug our kids, love our partners, don't you suggest? And uh, let's see what let's see what the tomorrow brings. I hope you all stay sane tonight. Um, sure, watch the news, go vote. If you're still in line, don't leave the line just because we're alive, right? Stay in right. line, cast your vote, make it matter. And um, we'll see you tomorrow because tomorrow will be yet another day, no matter what the outcome, whether we have an outcome tonight or not. That's tomorrow right. is another day and business will continue. Our work will continue. Life will go on. And Tamara says it, and eat ice cream or yes. indulge in something else that floats your boat. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Have a great week. We will see you tomorrow. Anyway, we'll be back. The one thing you can uh, be assured of is we'll be back. <laughs> so. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Bye for now. Bye.